Welcome to Prayer Anywhere. We would like to thank the Center for Spiritual Formation for the litany used in today's worship. Almighty God, you have manifested your Son, Jesus Christ, to be a light to humankind. Show us your heavenly light and give us grace to follow him till he finds us. Grant that we, your people, being nourished by your word, may be strengthened to go forth the unsearchable riches of Christ to all. Show us your heavenly light and give us grace to follow him till he finds us. That he may be known, adored, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Show us your heavenly light and give us grace to follow him till he finds us. The path of the upright is like the light of the dawn, its brightness growing to the fullness of the day. The way of the wicked is as dark as night. They cannot tell the obstacles they stumble over. Sin speaks to sinners in the depths of the heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They see themselves with too flattering an eye to detest and detest their guilt. Everything they say is malicious and deceitful. They have turned their backs on wisdom. As they lie on their beds, they plot the defeat of goodness. Once set on her evil course, 
no wickedness is too much for them. Your love, O Lord, reaches to heaven, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your saving justice is like towering mountains. Your judgment is like the mighty deep. O Lord, you give protection to human beings and the beasts. O Lord, how precious is your faithful love. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. They drink from the stream of your delight. In you is the source of life, and by your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright in heart. Do not let the foot of the arrogant crush me, or wicked hands push me aside. See how the evildoers fall, slung down and never to rise again. In you is the source of life. And by your light, we see light. Solomon judges wisely. Some time later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them began, this woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was your son and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine and the dead one is yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours and each says that the dead one belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to that king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to one woman and half to the other. Then the woman who, the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, oh no, my Lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, All right, he will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, Do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. When all Israel heard the king's decision, the people were in awe of the king, for they saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. What came into being in him was life, a life that was the light of humankind. A light that shines in darkness, and darkness could not overpower it. I am writing to God's church in Corinth. To you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. 
I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this, for he is faithful to what he says, and he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no division in the church. Rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. For some members of the household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollo, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. For now no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh yes. I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. The Wisdom of God the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the strength of humans. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. To you then, O Jesus, do I turn my true and last end. You are the river of life, which alone can satisfy my thirst. Without you, all else is barren and void. Without all else, you alone are enough for me. You are the redeemer of those that are lost, the sweet consoler of the sorrowful, the crown of glory for the victors, the recompense of the blessed. One day I hope to receive of your fullness and sing the song of praise in my true home. Give me only on earth some few drops of consolation and I will patiently await your coming that I may enter into the joy of my Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again next time.